The Balao class was the next fleet submarine class that was built for the US Navy after the highly successful Gato class. The earlier subs had undergone a number of revisions to their design during production, and this new class represented a chance to bring together all of these elements in one coherent group of improvements, as well as including a number of other advancements that had been made. Now, whilst the Olympics might have a motto of faster, higher, stronger, the design teams for the Balaos clearly embra embraced DACA, deeper, stronger as their watchwords. Uh, whilst having a similar speed and overall dimensions to the Gato class, the hulls of the Balaos were made both thicker and of a new type of stronger steel, which increased their rated safe diving or test depth by more than a third, as well as extending their crush depth which is rather obvious given the name, still further. This was a significant improvement as it meant that the subs could make themselves harder to detect in the first place, and could evade more easily as depth charges would take longer to sink to their level, and at shallower depths they were better able to withstand nearby explosions. With submarine operations also taking place more and more underwater, and even when on the surface stealth was more appreciated than anything else, the sub's superstructure, namely the sail and its associated equipment, were also reduced significantly in profile compared to most Gatos, with the layout internally being also altered in line with wartime experience. These changes incorporated the inclusion as standard of a pair of radar antenna, one to help to search for targets on the surface, and the other to help warn the sub of approaching aircraft. This all led to a submarine that displaced just over 1,500 tonnes when surfaced, and just under 2,500 tonnes whilst submerged. As with the Gatos, the subs used two shafts, driven by combination diesel-electric drive, for a speed of between 20 and 21 knots on the surface and 8 to 9 knots submerged, although in this department improvements were still ongoing, with earlier submarines having a high-speed drive with gearing for slow-speed operations, and later units being a combina given a combination of high- and low-speed electric motors, which made them both more stealthy and also improved battery life and thus endurance when operating underwater. As designed, the armament consisted of a single deck-mounted 4-inch gun, which was an improvement on the 3-inch that had been specced for previous classes. However, subs of both classes would often beg, borrow, or steal a bigger gun if they couldn't get one officially, and by means fair or foul, most of the class would wind up with a stripped-down 5-inch gun of some sort, in replacing the issued deck gun, usually a 25 caliber version with modifications to allow it to survive being submerged. A single 40mm Bofors and a twin 20mm Orlikon mount were also installed by default, although again US Navy sub crews would prove highly inventive in the field of acquiring more deck mounted weaponry, and so any given sub might have a substantially different loadout in this regard as compared to a sister boat after a few months in service. A somewhat more fixed was the torpedo armament, with six forward and four aft tubes for a total of ten, with 24 torpedoes carried in internally. Initially, these would be the Mark 14, with some Mark 18 electric torpedoes included as the war went on. The subs would prove to be the Fletchers of the underwater world, with 120 boats commissioned into service, and with so many cancelled at the end of the war as to almost match the Gato's full production run purely based on the cancellations. The Balaos benefited from entering service around the time that the major problems with the Mark 14 torpedo had been fixed, and so most of them could launch straight into effective service. Between their numbers, performance, and actually having working torpedoes, they began to reap a fearsome toll of Japanese shipping. The converted aircraft carrier Shinano was sent to the bottom by a spread of torpedoes from the Balao class USS Archerfish, whilst relatively few were lost in return, partially due to relatively poor Japanese anti-submarine warfare technology and tactics, and partially because by the time the Balaos had got through with it, there wasn't actually that much of an Imperial Japanese Navy left to conduct anti-submarine warfare after the first year or so. Thanks to their durability, range, and the fact that a number either saw relatively little service in the war or were finished thereafter, a lot of hulls still had a lot of potential life in them. But advances in submarine technology had already rendered their design obsolete. 
Thus, large numbers would go into reserve immediately after the war, whilst still more were distributed to the navies of 12 different US allies. Of those sold to Allied navies, one, the USS Catfish, would end up still being in service with Ar the Argentinian navy in 1982 under the designation ARA Santa Fe. And this ship would end up being depth charged, machine gunned, and shot at with a number of small missiles before being captured during the British retaking of South Georgia in the Falklands War. However, a number were left in service with the US Navy and would undergo various upgrades, mostly known as the various iterations of the Guppy program. This upgraded the batteries and electric motors, smoothed out and further reduced the sail, and introduced a snorkel for safer recharging alongside various sensor and fire control upgrades. Additionally, USS Burfish would become a radar picket submarine for a few years, and several others were fitted for testing and service launching of land attack guided missiles such as Regulus. Two were turned into amphibious assault subs, and Baya was used for sonar testing, whilst Barbero was briefly converted into a cargo submarine. Collectively, most of the class, whether modified or in reserve, would not see the scrapyard until the late 1960s and early 1970s, with ships in foreign service generally lasting even longer. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.